Hi, Mark Fickers, Senior Print Viz Consultant here at Sabre Limited, and welcome. This video is uh, to review scrap tables. We're going to take a look at our scrap tables today and how you, the different categories that you can affect the scrap that works in your estimate and how to set them up. So let's get started. Here we are at the role center. So the first thing that we'll look at is we'll go into a scrap table. And so again, those scrap tables are attached to uh, different areas. So I'm just navigating to departments. And then if I go to print viz setup, and then if I work to estimating, then I can see there, there's my scrap tables and I can open up that table. And what we're going to look at is, let's take a look at, um, we'll look at a pressed to start with. So here we are at our Speedmaster, Heidelberg Speedmaster. And we'll edit that table. And when it opens up the speed table, you have the code, you have the description. Um, and that's pro predominantly what you're looking at for, for this setting. Most of this functionality happens down here in the lower scrap table. And so let's take a look at one of the lines. So what we have here is we can, again, add different parameters that determine which line the estimate should use for scrap. So we can create different conditions to have different values for scrap. Here we've used it based on quantity, and you'll see why in a minute when we take a look at these. But let's take a look at what these settings do as affecting our scrap. So I'm just going to extend these a little bit so we can see them. Okay, so the first one we have here from from quantity one up until just before 2000, what it will do is per sheet, so that's your layout sheet in the job, will take and add 30 sheets. If I wanted to have for any following, so if I have more than one sheet in my job, I could add a value here, perhaps for press, you want some extra setup um, that isn't necessarily needed to be the same amount when you go to additional sheets. But we also have per plate. So you can use any combinations. You don't need to have them all. You can skip this whole one and just say, well, I just want to put in um, how many per plate. But again, we have the separation between our first and multiples of plate setups because commonly we have some that like to be able to, def some will make it the same for all, which is fine. Uh, but this allows us that flexibility and PrintFizz comes with a lot of flexibility and this is one of the areas. So for the first plate, it's gonna look at adding 75 sheets for scrap for the press. Each additional plate after that will only be 50. This column after that is called scrap percent running. And this is the one that's going to take a look at the length of your run and add a percentage of the length, which allows us to add more scrap for the longer runs. And of course, the value will be less. But because we have these fixed minimum setups, we won't get caught with a short run of only 2%. And if it's only a 1,000 sheets, you're only going to have 20. Well, that's not enough. So we have this static setup, but we also have this variable setup. And the two work together to, to simulate and, and bring about the total number of scrap sheets that you need um, for your press. The per processing is if you're going to have multiple passes on your press. And these last two pertain to some companies that have multiple shifts on their press. Um, want to have some extra setup thrown in if we quote a job that's obviously going to take more than one shift. Um, then we want to build in some little bit of extra scrap for shift change. And that's what they're for. The next line is, is producing the same amount of scrap um, values, only we've set this condition to be triggered once we've hit 20,000 in our run number of impressions. And everything is the same, but you can see here, this gives us the ability to say, well, as we get into bigger runs, we don't need 2%, that's too much paper. 
So we'll set this to be 1.2 and then of course as we hit 35,000. So you can set any of these values that you like for your conditions. And this allows us to pretty give a fair bit of detail as to how we stipulate how that will happen. Now, the other thing that you may have noticed is you say, well, that's great, that's for our press, but where is it taking into consideration the folding or bindery type processes that will need to have printed scrap for their setup? And so let's go back and we're gonna deal with those on our folding machine. So there's our cross folding. And again, it's the same table. We have a code and we have a description. We have the same categories, but we haven't filled them all in. We've only used the ones that we need. So what we're saying is per form, per sheet, we want to have a static quantity of 15 sheets for setup. If you want more, let's say that's not enough. I need 50 sheets. And we just simply go in and change it. And then we can set the scrap percent. Now this is only flat out 3%. We can do the same thing we did with our press. We can add another quantity parameter at which point we want to reduce it to say 2% or 1.5%. It's just simply some additional lines that you have to set there. So how does this all come together? Let's take a look at um, now that we've got all our different trends. You can create, you can copy the same as speed tables. You can um, add new ones and create your own scrap tables. But again, most of these are added to your cost centers through the rapid start process that we do in the initial setup. So now I'm going to go back to uh, let's go back to our case case list, and I'll scroll up and let's take posters. That's a good one. Let's take a look at that. So now what's happening is if we go into our uh, estimating page, we have our desktop and all the other values. But now we get into our paper stock. And we can see based on, let's take a look, we're, we're going to produce 500 posters. And so when we go into specifications, we can see that we have 500 is required, but we have a total scrap value of 295. Well, where did that come from? It came from our speed tables. If, if we go up here to our processes and display our processes right now, it shows for our press, let's scroll this across so you can see it. Remember those settings? Those are those settings that we looked at. 2%, the 30 per sheet, the plate scrap is in there. And so that all accumulates to say we need um, total scrap for this process is 295. Okay, and on our cutter, we have some scrap, so that adds in there. So this is where you can see where those scrap values are, are displayed. So how does that work out? Let's take a look at our page again. So that's where the total sheet, and you can see we have a sheet value of 795 sheets total, which includes our scrap for the press, our scrap for the cutter, and any table work, if we wanted to add that, it doesn't look like we have some something in there, but um, any operation that you have can have some scrap. And what PrintFizz does is it accumulates that as you add it. So let's say, for example, so let's take a, a look at this. We have 795 sheets. So let's say this job requires us to add some folding. So now we have to fold. So we go into our finishing, and we're going to look at some cross-folding. And let's add that operation because remember we looked at the scrap table for our folder and it actually had um, 50 sheets that we added plus a percent. I believe it was a 3%. And if we go back and look at our paper setting, it went from 795 to 862. And that was because as we add more operations, it accumulates your scrap back to your press so that you're always calculating to run the total amount of scrap you need for the entire job in all its processes. And if I wanted to go in, I could go back to specifications and see those processes. And you now see 
it's added the cross folding and added that 3% and 50, which comes to 65, which is added in here and it adds to the 297 that's required there. So we end up with 862 sheets. Okay. So that's how our scrap tables work and that's how we set them. If you have any questions about this or anything else related to PrintFizz, uh, please call us at uh, Sabre Limited and we'd be happy to help you out. Have a good day.